In my opinion, the Pillars of Creation will have to go down as one of the best ever computer desktop background images I've used. I know that sounds a little insulting to all the work that's been put into the image, but what it really means to me is something quite different. You see, I love the image. I adore looking at it. You'll sometimes see me just staring straight into a blank desktop admiring its vividly phenomenal cosmic beauty. For me, a background desktop image is the next best thing to having a framed photograph on your work table or desk, and the pillars of creation have grown so close to my heart that it requires a special real estate of its own. What better place to have it than on your computer desktop background? It's even on my phone lock screen. Anyway, enough about me. The James Webb Telescope has captured yet another marvel for us to appreciate. This time, it's one of my favorites, the Pillars of Creation. Calling the Pillars of Creation iconic might be an understatement, but if you're unaware of what they are, let me just give you a quick refresher. Pillars of Creation is a photograph taken by the Hubble Space Telescope of elephant trunks of interstellar gas and dust in the Eagle Nebula in the Serpent's constellation some 6,500 to 7,000 light years from Earth. They are called star factories because the gas and dust are making new stars while also being worn away by the light from the new stars that have just been formed. Space.com named it one of the top 10 Hubble photographs taken on April 1, 1995. Jeff Hester and Paul Scohan from Arizona State University were the astronomers behind this feat. The region was re-photographed by the Herschel Space Observatory in 2011, by Hubble's new camera in 2014, and now by the James Webb Space Telescope in 2022. The Chandra X-ray Observatory, or AXAF, was able to see X-ray sources of various levels in the area from young stars in 2001. It was released in 2007, and did not find many X-ray sources in the towers, but it did find X-ray sources in the area. The name comes from a phrase used by Charles Spurgeon in his 1857 sermon, The Condescension of Christ. The then new Hubble image of the Eagle Nebula was called Pillars of Creation by NASA scientists because of its rich symbolic tradition with hundreds of years of meaning. Even though we think of pillars as being part of the classical temples of Greece and Rome, the idea of the pillars of creation, which hold up the world and everything in it, is important in the Christian tradition. When William Jennings Bryan wrote the world-famous oration in 1906, he included a sermon by London pastor Charles Haddon Spurgeon called The Condescension of Christ. In it, Spurgeon uses the phrase to describe not only the physical world, but also the force that keeps it all together. Spurgeon says of the birth of Christ, And now wonder ye angels, the infinite has become an infant, and upon whose shoulders the universe doth hang, hangs at his mother's breast. He who who created all things and bears up the pillars of creation hath now become so weak that he must be carried by a woman. I think this encapsulates the beauty behind the pillars. Although it doesn't need to be a religious thing, the idea of the birth of innumerable cosmic objects is what makes this so special. The image is famous for its global influence. National Geographic said on the 20th anniversary of the image that it had been used on everything from t-shirts to coffee mugs. See, I'm not the only one. If everyone else can put it on mugs and t-shirts, why can't I use it as my desktop background? Sorry, that was just me thinking out loud. The web has achieved glory once again. The pillars of creation, where new stars are forming within dense clouds of gas and dust, has just been recaptured by the James Webb Space Telescope. The three-dimensional pillars look like rock formations, but they are more permeable. These columns are made of cool interstellar gas and dust that looks sometimes semi-transparent in near-infrared light. Webb's new view of the pillars of creation will help researchers revamp their models of star formation by identifying more precise numbers of new stars and the amount of gas and dust in the area. Over time, they will begin to understand how stars form and burst out of these dusty clouds over millions of years. The pillars are made up of cool hydrogen and dust that are being eroded by the light of hot stars. The leftmost pillar is about four light years in length. The finger-like bumps at the top of the clouds are larger than the solar system, 
and are visible because of the shadows of evaporating gaseous globules, or EGGs, which give protection to the gas behind them from acute UV flux. EGGs are themselves incubators of new stars. The stars then emerge from the EGGs, which are then evaporated. This image from Webb's near-infrared camera, or NERCAM, shows newly formed stars. These are the bright red orbs that usually have diffraction spikes and are outside one of the dusty pillars. When knots of gas and dust get big enough, they start to collapse under their own gravity and heat up. New stars are created this way. The wavy lines that look like lava at the edges of some pillars are ejections from stars that are still forming within the gas and dust. Supersonic jets are shot out occasionally by young stars that collide with clouds of material. Bow shocks can create wavy patterns like a boat does when it moves through water, sometimes resulting from these collisions. The reddish glow comes from the hydrogen that is produced by jets and shocks. This is evident in the second and third pillars from the top. The NERCAM image is practically throbbing with their activity. The young stars are estimated to be a few hundred thousand years old. Although it may seem like near-infrared light has allowed Webb to pierce through the clouds to show great cosmic distances beyond the pillars, there are almost no galaxies in this view. Instead, a mixture of gas and dust called the interstellar medium blocks our view of the deeper universe too much. Each advanced instrument gives researchers new information about this region, which is full of stars. The constellation Serpens is home to the Eagle Nebula, which is about 6,500 light years away from Earth. The nebula, also known as Messier 16, is starlight that can be barely glimpsed by the naked eye on clear evenings in July and August. But enjoy it while you can, because in a few million years, the nebula will be gone and there will be no more stars. Like most things in our universe, they're born, they exist, and they die. A cloud of hot dust in the vicinity of the Pillars of Creation was discovered by the Spitzer Space Telescope. The Pillars of Creation are thought to have been destroyed by a supernova 6,000 years ago. It is thought that the Pillars of Creation have already been destroyed, but because light travels at a finite speed, it should be visible from Earth in about a thousand years. Though this explanation of the hot dust has been challenged by an astronomer uninvolved in the Spitzer observations, who debates that a supernova should have ensued in stronger radio and X-ray radiation than has been detected, and that winds from massive stars could instead have heated the dust, the pillars of creation will go through a gradual erosion if this is the case. We're not really sure if it will stay or go, but we can be certain that we'll have all sorts of images before anything of that sort happens. The James Webb Telescope has really been redefining astronomy over the past few months, deploying its incredible sensitive equipment to bring us data that has never been seen before. It continues to churn out fresh, picturesque views of the cosmos that will be seen time and again through the forthcoming years. The entire Webb team, astronomers, researchers, and scientists have our thanks, because quite honestly, there isn't anything like this you've ever seen. So, what other new images will the web send back in the near future? And what theories will the web disprove? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Space Traveler.